Hi, I'm Clark. I want to show you my BBMS Bank Manager Plus. It's a device that will let you mix a bit of lithium in with your lead system. It'll allow you to uh, leave all your old charge regulators uh, just as they are now. And it lets you reap a lot or really all of the benefits of having a lithium system without all the expenses. What this is, is a device that will control the charging and the discharging of your lithium battery bank in the presence of a lead battery bank on a boat that really hasn't been customized for lithium. It can have old regulators from 10 years ago that do a good job with lead but don't know a thing about lithium. So it's a kind of a cheap way to enter the world of lithium. And on top of that, I believe it charges your lithium better than anything I've seen on the market. Uh, it doesn't risk overcharging of your lithium as badly as many of the algorithms that are out there. And in mixing lead and lithium, lithium is a little bit touchy, as I've said in other videos. If you got a lightning strike on your boat, I don't think you could count on the BMS as surviving, and you probably would lose your lithium bank until you've done some work. But the lead is good and it allows you to keep lead in your system, to have lead do what lead does well. If you choose to follow this uh, crazy idea and get one of these devices, uh, what's the big advantage? Well, you get to play with lithium. You, know, you get to start having some lithium in your system. Why do you want lithium? Well, here's what happens. Uh, this is from a guy that's been running and living as a cruiser for 30 years, or well, 20 years, 30 years I've owned this boat. Uh, I was living aboard in a marina, but you know, it's kind of the same thing. So I've got a good idea of how power works on a boat, right? With lead, you're gonna wake up every morning and you're gonna be down in the 12s if you're lucky. The voltages are gonna be rather low. Uh, during the day, the voltages go right up and your charging systems just can't jam it into the lead because it won't accept it quickly. If you go this way and add a bit of lithium, enough to get through the night, what you'll find is in the morning you wake up, you'll still be at like 13.1 or 13 volts. You'll be nice high in voltage, everything's running very efficiently. During the day, you won't go up in voltage very much until you're nearly fully charged and your solar panels can just dump power into lithium where they have trouble sh shooting it into lead. So even having a small amount of lithium, it, it makes it like you have twice as much solar panel. And man, everybody can use some more solar panel. The limit now is not the cost. Panels have come way down in price. But if you live on a boat, it's where do you put them? This lets you basically have more power from the sun. I got a lot of videos on how to charge lithium, how to charge lead and the theory of it. But now I'm gonna tell you just exactly how one of these devices works. Uh, I've got another video that kind of shows what happens when you get the box if you were to buy one of these and how to assemble one. But this one we're going to talk about how to use one. I've got it opened up right now and um, I'm going to fi fire it up in the middle but there's some things I want to show you inside first. There's a bunch of uh, screw terminals here on the bottom. I'm going to start at the left and go through where all they all hook to. The first one is labeled uh, plus five volts and it goes to this little device. What this is, is a Hall effect sensor, and it goes, um, basically it very sensitively measures the magnetic field of anything that's happening through this hole in the middle. And it can let my device figure out how many amps are flowing through the wire that cause that magnetic field. The ground pin also runs to all the ground of your DC system, uh, where all your battery negatives come together, uh, somewhere fairly close to this device because we don't want to have a voltage drop from a long distance. Then the next pair up um, have to do with which type of contactor you have in your system. I go into that more in depth in the other video, but in this case I have a, a normally open so I hook the wire to the on. In other words, that pin will get charged when this should turn on. Finally, we have two more wires and these go to the positive side of your lead system and to the positive side of your lithium system. Finally, you should have a switch on your negative wire. This is how you turn the whole thing on and off. I'm gonna turn it on now and I want to show you the inside of the device when I turn it on. We have two things in here. We have an LED and we have one little switch on the, uh, the board, just a push button switch. 
There are two of these devices available, the Bank Manager Base and the Bank Manager Plus. The Bank Manager Plus is all I'm releasing right now because I have a very limited number of boards. But if you had a Bank Manager Base, um, you just wouldn't have any of these other controls. You would only have those two things. Okay, let's watch the LED while I turn this on. And I'm gonna talk you through what's happening kind of in real time. First, you get two flashes. Two flashes means it's a Bank Manager Plus. Then you get a, a little glow. You get one flash and one more glow. What that decodes to is the first one is either one or two flashes. One flash means the base unit and two flashes means it's configured to be the BBMS Plus. Um, if the BBMS Plus were to have trouble and uh, need to um, try to do this, the, the work it needs to do, for example, if this were to fail and it notices it fails, it will put itself in the BBMS mode. And you need to realize this because it's very seldom, but occasionally um, it can put itself in the wrong mode and then the display won't turn on. Uh, how you change mode is very simple. You turn it off, hold the button down, and turn it on. And that can be either button. You can use the button on the display I'll talk about in a second. Uh, after the one or two flashes, there's the glow. That's just a, a sign that I'm about to tell you what version it is. And then it flashes a number of flashes that tells you what version of the software you're running. And then the glow again, and then the system starts. After the actual startup um, event is over, the LED is on when it thinks you should be connected, when the contactor should be closed. It's off when it thinks the contactor should be separated, off. It flashes um, at a couple different rates indicating some transition states, but that's all in the manual. Okay, let's put this together now. Uh, let me turn it off. Let's put this together now. So it's a little easy to see. And take a look at a installation. I'm going to try to run through a little simulation here of how it would work. Um, it's going to be a little odd because we're having a very, very cloudy day today. There's not much power. And I actually have the lead side of this hooked right to Temptress's lead batteries. So it's being controlled by all her uh, solar panel regulators and, um, you know, everything else there is in a boat. Refrigeration, running, using loads. So it's going to be a bit of a surprise for me to see what happens. So we've got our system all wired up now. We have uh, this guy standing in for my lithium bank. It's a whopping six amp hours. Uh, we've got uh, our shunt, as it were. It's actually a Hall Effect uh, sensor on the wire, the positive wire going there. We have it such that its little arrow points towards the battery. We have our contactor hooked up so that um, it's connected to all the devices properly. And uh, we have our sense wires for voltage going back to our device coming right off these terminals because they're convenient. So this one is lithium and this side is, is lead. And it's time to turn this on and see what happens. First, we get a little display with our, our little uh, mascot and the fact this is a Bank Manager Plus version 1.1. And then up comes the, the situation running in the world. We are currently disconnected. The lithium battery is about 13.2, just slightly under. The lead battery is at uh, 13.5. The lead bank um, is right now taking charge from the solar panels, so it's a little high, and I'd like these batteries to come together right now. I could force them together, but if I did that when the voltages are very different, there's gonna be a big amp flow, and that could cause problems. So this system will never connect your lithium and your lead unless the voltages are very close to each other, and it works out fine. So what I'm gonna do is ask my wife to go turn off the battery chargers. And we should see the, the lead side. And this is actually, like I said, this is Temptress's uh, real lead batteries. We should see that come down. And when that comes down a little bit, they'll lock together. Okay. Well, we see the voltage coming down. Now they've come together. Would you turn it back on again, please? Um, now we're actually seeing a negative flow of amps because the lead is now down and this little lithium battery is trying to give power to the rest of the system. But she's turned them back on. And we all know if you have a solar regulator, it takes them a few minutes to kind of get their act together. 
uh, but they should be coming together here pretty soon. Okay, now that the solar panels are charging again, we're starting to see a positive amp flow um, coming into the batteries and that they're connected and they're charging. This is a very, very low amp flow, partly because this is a uh, <laughs> not a very sunny day. You gotta take what you get. Uh, partly because um, this is a teeny tiny battery and it's pretty much charged up, so it's not gonna accept very much. And honestly, partly because I got some ridiculously small wire going to the ship's batteries, but uh, it's just for demonstration purposes. Anyway, what would happen is that display would show you they're connected and it would be connected throughout much of the day. It'll be accepting amperage until it gets to the point where um, the device believes that the lithium is charged to the level you've set it to be charged to. When that happens, it will disconnect the lithium from the lead. Uh, it'll let the lead be under the control of your regulators. So your solar regulators who are set for lead will probably charge the lead longer and do a soak cycle and all the things that lead likes. But the lithium will be able to relax and be not part of this. The lithium will be marked with a little asterisk that comes up after its uh, voltage number. And that asterisk will tell you that it thinks the lithiums are fully charged. Um, they eventually will come back together as the, uh, the, the ship's voltage, the lead voltage comes down. And that'll happen either because the regulators think it's time for the voltage to come down, or uh, in most cases, it'll happen because the sun goes down. Uh, but it'll come down as the voltage comes down, these will lock back together. Uh, the lithium will now basically run the system. It will feed power into all of the ship's devices and it will float your lead batteries at a nice comfortable voltage uh, until the next morning. Now, you have control over all these things. So I think it might be good right now to go through the menuing system and show how that works. So again, looking at the display, what we have here is a, a little device I can turn or I can push. I'm gonna push the button. So this is our menu. Uh, the first thing is uh, charge two, and as I rotate this, it'll go down through the menu. Probably easier to see in person. Uh, lithium bank size, the uh, reset full battery, the maximum full battery, uh, what type of contactor you have, what type of sensor you have, a way of doing a factory reset, and then resume operation, which would send you right back. I'm gonna go back into it now. Uh, and look into each of these. If you click on it when it's at charge two, you get um, these choices. You can charge anywhere from 100%, uh, and I also have 98.5, which is really close to 100. Uh, those two should be very accurate, actually, um, as far as uh, the percent of charge that actually ends up in the battery. Then we have uh, 95, 90, 85, on down to 50%. As you get away from 100, I get fewer cues based on amps and volts about the chemistry that's happening inside the battery. But since you're nowhere near the actual full charge number, it doesn't matter so much. Uh, if if I, you say I go to 50% and I went to 62%, you know, it's basically the same. And you have one more choice, use volts. If you put it in use volts mode, you'll get a lot of other options, but basically use volts mode is using the logic that's available to the BMS base unit, not the plus. So I'm gonna set it for 100%. Now lithium battery bank size, click on that. This is where you set the size of your bank. Uh, you get to set it any number from uh, 10 amp hours up to uh, 250, uh, wait, well, I don't know, how far can it go? Well, way the heck up. Oh yeah, 2,550 amp hours. Uh, you computer people might know why that number comes out that way. <laughs> anyway, choose what you have. Uh, Temptress's big batteries are 200, so I would stop there. But for this purpose, I'm on a six amp hour battery, and honestly, the closest I can do is 10. This isn't really designed for teeny batteries. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. That says reset full battery. A little technical, but when it goes below whatever voltage you choose here, it's gonna be factory starting at 13.15 volts. Whenever you go below that, it will assume you would like to do another charge cycle for the, the lithium battery. Completely adjustable. Uh, max full battery, this is saying that 
when I think the battery is fully charged, uh, the device will not uh, link them together if you're above this voltage and going up. If you're going down, fine, but when you're going up, it, what it is is it won't ever, under, under any circumstance, charge a battery, a lithium battery that it thinks is full above 13.4. And that's a good voltage to use because um, kind of at that voltage, you cannot possibly overcharge lithium, I, uh, lithium iron phosphate, as I understand it. Okay, contactor type, either monostable or bistable. Uh, we're using a monostable, normally open, uh, normally closed. It's also monostable. But if you're using a bistable relay, one that has one coil that turns it on and one that turns it off, it's important that you set that. Uh, I'm using a monostable, so let me set it for monostable. And sensor type. These sensors uh, come in various uh, sizes. This is a 200 amp sensor. It's probably what everybody would be happy with, but they come in all different sizes. If you choose a smaller sensor, you won't be able to read higher amperages, but you'll get much, much more sensitivity, honestly, more than you need. If you have a really huge system, you might want a six or an 800 amp sensor, and the device can do that. Let's set it back to 200. Uh, factory uh, reset is exactly what it says. If you choose yes and push the button, it'll do a factory reset back to default uh, parameters. No need to do that today. And then finally, we have resume, and it just puts it back in regular mode. You're in the menuing system, the contactor disconnects. This um, gives you a way of saying, just disconnect my system, just by pushing that button. And as long as you're in the menu, everything is disconnected. When you go back, it may reconnect immediately, or it may wait until it's safe to reconnect immediately. Uh, the system will never reconnect when the battery voltages are wildly different. So uh, just as a hint, if you were to adjust the menu in the morning, no problem. Solar will come up, things will happen, they'll reconnect. If you were to go into the menu system in the evening and make some changes and then re uh, leave the menu system, it might stay in a disconnect mode all night until the next morning. So you might be running off your lead all night till the next morning. Um, just not a convenient thing to do, but it's the only safe way for the device to make this decision. We have two of these battery bank management systems, BBMSs. We have the base unit, and the base unit looks much like this, except there's no display, no button. It uses internal switches to set the uh, parameters, and it only has the ability to charge to a given voltage and then disconnect. The Battery Bank Manager Plus, or Bank Manager Plus, has a very nice little display on it, and it has this uh, device uh, to let you communicate with it. On top of all the functions that the base unit has, the plus can also charge to a certain percentage. So you could say just charge to 50% and then bail out if you want to put your boat in storage. But more importantly, you can say charge to 100% and it will use the hints it gets from the amp flow and the voltage and the various batteries to figure out the state of charge and uses that knowledge to uh, charge it up to 100% and then let go. Honestly, I don't know any other battery chargers out there that use uh, a method as good as this to charge to full. There are some that are more lab type that can do it, and they certainly can do it well, but they re re absolutely rely on a stable current, a stable power supply. In other words, plugged into the wall. This thing can do the trick even when it's hooked to uh, solar panels on a cloudy day with everything changing. And at any moment, you might start the engine and throw hundreds of amps at it. It doesn't care. It can handle going right up to 100% and stopping when it gets to 100%. If you want to get one of these, go to the link below. It's in the description and probably on the screen. Emily and Clark's Adventure slash BBMS. You'll find all the details there written out in probably a calmer way than I could ever say them to a camera. Bye from Temptress.